சார் நாட் ஆடிபல் சார் இஸ் இட் ஆடிபல் நவ எஸ் சார் எஸ் சார் இட் இஸ் ஆடிபல் ஓகே எஸ் தி வெட்டரினரி டாக்ஸிகாலஜி இஸ் தி லாஸ்ட் யூனிட் ஆஃப் யுவர் கோர்ஸ் இஸ் கன்சர் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் வெரி இன்ட்ரஸ்டிங் தட் தி வெட்டரினரி டாக்ஸிகாலஜி is highly field applicable in nature except uh, one or two chapters of course almost all are very much tailor made and applicable to the field practices are concerned especially the plant toxicity and uh, the other uh, toxicities like the toxicity of urea then salt and heavy metals and many more are very practical and field oriented so with this brief introduction we will go to the actual topic itself we would say veterinary toxicology so this goes like this uh, first we will do some introductory part then history followed by the scope of the toxicology then what are all the sources of the poisoning then classification of the poison targets and mode of action of the poison as per your syllabus toxicokinetics then factors affecting the toxicity uh, especially the diagnosis part of the toxicity play a important role because it the treatment depends upon the proper diagnosis then the general principles of treatment of poisoning followed by the regular the individual toxicity studies so the coming to the few words about the introduction of the toxicology is concerned then the word toxicology is derived from the greek word toxicon toxicon means a poison so the toxicology means the study of the poisons so the toxicology or else in a essay very specific definitions it is the study of poison and their harmful effects on the living organisms especially it's a very general term the study of poison and their harmful effects on living organisms then this includes uh, varieties of the factors like the source of the poison then they how to identify this type of the poison and what are all the physical chemical properties of toxicity including the ld50 or the median lethal dose 50 then factors affecting the toxicity once again varieties of the factors are affecting the toxicity then kinetics dynamics then the clinical signs of the toxicity of different uh, toxic materials of course the post mortem findings uh, especially some of the post mortem findings are pathognomonic nature then the histopathological findings then diagnosis is very important part of the toxicity is concerned then including the differential diagnosis because many times the clinical signs of the poisoning will overlap they will exhibit the similar clinical signs so the differential diagnosis so the analytical procedures how to find the toxicity or the poison uh, based on the laboratory evidences and principles of the treatment because ultimately as a veterinarian this is very important but, but to arrive to this conclusion how to treat the animal with a proper antidote or the proper therapy or the therapeutic guidelines we need to study all these things of course the including the history of the poisoning also so the conditions uh, especially the toxicity situations one need to be Uh, handled very carefully because many times yesterday we have got to the sagar where there was a poisoning of the mimosa diplotrica plant and also asian common americana so these are the highly toxic the hybrid plants then uh, the 14 cattle have died the manad gindas so likely uh, we should find what are all the circumstantial evidences then the laboratory evidences then biochemical or the histopathology all need to be summarized then ultimately we need to find the treatment regimen so apart from this one the uh, especially toxicology also includes it now in the scope is wide and then it is uh, including the special effects of the toxicants like the carcinogenesis so deals with the cancer inducing toxicity teratogenesis means the monster fetus the mutagenesis so whatever the changes to the cellular level and also the immunotoxicity immunological toxicity then uh, if the poison is dangerous to the nervous system then neurotoxicity may be 
central or peripheral. Then the reproductive toxicity and also the ecotoxicity, etc. So coming to the first word, that's the poison or toxicant. They are synonyms. Any substance which, when taken internally or inwardly, so to be, repeat again, any substance which, when taken inwardly or applied on any kind of or manner on the body, depress the health or entirely, entirely destroys the lab. So uh, the poison or toxicant is a substance which, when taken internally or inwardly or applied on in any form or kind on the body surface, depress the health or entirely destroys the lung. Like this is the classical definition of a poison. Then another term like the xenobiotics, like uh, the xeno means strain or align, means it is foreign to the body. So xenobiotics are classically defined as the substances which are foreign to the body and are biologically active. So they are not of the body substances, but biologically they are active. And they cannot be broken down to, uh, to generate energy or be assimilated into a biosynthetic pathway. Because many times the food is also foreign to the body, whether it's a poison or xenobiotic, no, it's not. Because it is borrowed, broken down to produce the energy or the protein, which is required to the human or animals. Hence, it cannot be called as the xenobiotic. So, the substances uh, which are foreign to the body. So, some of the substances which are foreign to the body are also required to the living beings. Hence, we cannot call all those things as the xenobiotics. Then, very wide class uh, xenobiotic is a very wide class, include the structurally diverse agents, uh, both natural and man made. So, the natural and man made, such as chemicals as drugs, are they man made? And the industrial chemicals, pesticides, the alkaloids from the plants, then the secondary plant metabolites, and the toxins uh, of molds or the mycotoxins or the plant toxins like uh, the mimosin, xylene, and many uh, plant poisons. And plant, these uh, toxins from the animals, especially the biting venoms, especially the maybe honeybees, etc and also the environment pollutants. So these xenobiotics include a wide or diverse category of the substances. So common man does not realize the sugar and common salt could be poisonous or deleterious if taken in the excess. So uh, the paracelsus in the history we are going to deal, he has shown that all the substances in this uh, earth are poisonous and the dose is the one which differentiates the therapeutic agent or the poison. So this suspect, the sugar, if it is taken more and more, it causes the toxicity and at the same time, salt, if it is in, in, uh, ingested in excess, causes severe toxicity, severe dehydration, neurological signs, and the sheep or the cattle will die. Of course, the poultry also. So some of the agents which are too potent and lethal may not be toxic. See. Here, the cobra venom is a highly poisonous uh, toxic material. Then, if it is taken orally, it is uh, uh, not going to cause any toxicity because in, inside the intestine, it is going to be digested. But if it is administered parenterally or if a snake bites to a, uh, this animal or the human being, immediately they are going to collapse because of the very complex nature of the snake venom is concerned. So, the toxicity is defined in many, many of the varieties of the type. The, uh, so, it is also called as the inherent capacity of the substances to produce toxic effects or detrimental changes in the organisms. So, the, sometimes it is the inborn character of a material if it is taken by the animal, it causes the health hazards. Then also the toxicosis, so the state resulting from exposure to poison. Here, the multiple animals may be involved. So 
This uh, term toxicosis is uh, used interchangeably with uh, poisoning or the toxicity also. And the toxins are the toxicants or poisons. Toxins are the toxicants or poisons liberated or produced by the living organisms and are generally not well defined chemically. So, if you want to uh, state that the mycotoxins, of course. So, these are produced by the mold. That means they are the living organisms or the toxins from the honeybees. So, they are the substances liberated by some of the insects, like the, they are also the living organisms and are generally not well defined because it is the complex nature of the biological toxins. So, toxins also termed as the biotoxins. So, to make them more clear, clear so they are defined as the biotoxins. Then, depending upon the origin, toxins are grouped uh, in uh, different classes. So, as the name indicates here, the phytotoxins are the plant toxins. Then, mycotoxins are from the uh, fungal toxins because fungus is also a living thing. And zootoxins, usually it is the toxin from the lower animals, especially the buffotoxins means the, they are derived from the toads or the frogs and the snake venom. Oh, snake venom, varieties of the snakes are there. And accordingly, we are going to classify them as the venoms. Venoms are the materials which are or this originated from a special organized, uh, specialized gland, the lower animals, especially the amphibians. And the bacterial toxins, yes, uh, now they are causing a lot of problems, especially the Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, etc. They are going to cause the toxicity, endotoxicosis. So, the two types of the bacterial toxins are there. One is the endotoxin and then another one is the exotoxin. So, the endotoxins are found within or as a part of the bacterial cells. So, the suppose it is a E. coli endotoxin, then it is found or within the animal body, then as a, as a part of the bacterial cell. So, they produce certain substances to protect themselves. Whereas the exotoxins, so they are liberated from the bacterial cells. So, the example is the botulinum toxins, etc. They are uh, produced from the decaying materials from the clostridium species of the microorganisms. So, they are called as the exotoxins, whereas the endotoxins are produced by the microorganisms inside the body as, and as a part of the bacterial cells, as a part of the bacterial cell. As the bacterial cell uh, get lies, these are liberated from the bacteria or the exotoxins are liberated from the bacterial cells directly. So, there is no uh, very big difference between the endo or exotoxins, but luckily we can say that the endotoxins are released from as a part of the bacterial cell. It may be a part of cell wall, cell membrane, uh, etc., or maybe the nucleus, nucleolus, etc. Whereas the exotoxins liberated from the, the bacteria, so bacterial cells as a special substances, exotoxins. So, the next term is the toxinology. So, toxinology, toxinology is a branch that deals with the study of toxins, effects of the toxins. Then the hazard or risk. So, there is a very, what you call as hairline margin is present here. The likelihood of poison of an organism after exposure to a particular toxicant. So, uh, the hazard is or the risk are the likelihood or it is expectation or probability that suppose there are a air pollutants are there, then how much toxicity they may cause on the living organisms. So, when they are exposed to the particular toxic, it is called as the hazard or the risk. Then there is a saying that the highly toxic chemical may not be much hazardous. So, a marginal difference is that highly toxic chemicals may not be much hazardous as the least toxic chemical. So, sometimes the highly toxic chemicals may be less hazardous, whereas the 
less toxic chem chemicals may be highly hazardous. There are varieties of the example for this one, and uh, we can study the, in future. We are going to study all these things and come to a very brief history about the toxicology. It's very interesting also to learn because how the uh, uh, toxicity or the toxicology it arrived and the poisonous properties of the certain plants and animals were uh, associated with the as well as the mankind means uh, it was known to the mankind that many of the things are not acceptable by our body and the poisoning sometimes assumes the dimensions of the environmental disasters such as the Bhopal gas disasters and also so here you can see varieties of the historic episodes of the toxicity in uh, about 40,000 people died in the ergotism in uh, the 1992 in France and Spain. So at that time, it was not known uh, they have the, about the Plyoceps purpurea and other microorganisms caused or released the ergot alkaline. So about uh, 900, especially 40,000 people died in a single episode. So the ergotism at that uh, time was known as the purifier means the God has sent it uh, for destroying the human beings. So it's called as the holy fire. The term fire was used because the burning sensations in the extremities uh, that was experienced by the individuals showing the this uh, gangrenous ergotism. So at that time it was not known how this uh, is going to be caused and what is the exact cause for the fire. So the people used to get burning sensations, the tip of the maybe ear or tip of the uh, extremities or appendages like the fingers, etc. So they call this as the holy firing. Then the holy was used was fear of punishment from the God. Here is an ancient picture. So they were looking towards the sky, especially after affected with the gangrene from consuming the ergotism, ergotism or affected corn, a corpse. So it was uh, thought that it was a curse of the God and the people who create sin or the, the, the people who are involved in the bad activities will be punished by the God and uh, that's who the, it is the first episode of the disaster. So then the nuclear accident especially three mile island near the Harrisburg in Pennsylvania, United States of America in uh, the 1979. It was the first, first uh, especially the nuclear reactors and other thing. So much protection was not taken uh, as on uh, present day. And uh, there was an accident happened in uh, the Pennsylvania. Then the nuclear accident in Pennsylvania Three mile island accident. It was a island and was four meltdown in the unit of three mile island nuclear generation station in Pennsylvania in 1979, which killed a number of people. And it was the most significant accident history of the USA under the commercial nuclear power generating industry. Then this resulted in the release of approximately 2.5 million curies of the radioactive gases and approximately 15 curies of the iodine-131. Both of these are highly hazardous radiating generating substances. So such a vast uh, radioactive gases release and the entire population of that particular island, three mile island was totally, the, the people, they died. So this was the very big disaster and which attracted the attention of the entire world. How the modern systems also bring the hazardous things from the benefits also. So the Bhopal grass tragedy is very interesting and uh, a, an alarming situation which alerted the entire country and the world how the disasters occurs due to the poisons. So this methyl isocyanate in the December 1984, so it was one of the biggest tragedy of the poisoning in the entire world itself. So 
uh, the world's worst industrial catastrophes means it is one of the ancient uh, catastrophe catastrophe means an incidence which is involving the huge number of the people then this bhopal gas tragedy is a very interesting substance i have written one article in my facebook also then uh, december 2 or 3 night especially december 2 night at 12 pm 12 pm on the year 1984 the union carbide india was a very big manufacturer of the pesticide plant especially the bopa so it used to manufacture pesticides and uh, the methyl isocyanate gas was very much required for the production of some of the pesticides especially the carbaryl etc which is a organophosphorus compound and the chemicals from plant resulted in exposure of thousands of people in a single span about 2 to 3 hours about uh 20 to 30 thousand people died but official estimate is little bit so here there was a the union carbon was having uh, the storage content of the methyl isocyanate and especially uh, the water gushed inside this particular plant and uh, the wall could not be closed then there was a very sudden explosion of that particular union carbide gas chamber and uh, about the official sources they say that that is about 2259 and the government of madhya pradesh has confirmed the total death of 3787 but the related to the gas release so this was an episode and you can uh, see this particular episode and especially uh, in the youtube channel uh, like this uh, the bopal gas tragedy and if you search the what are all the things happened on that particular day and how it went especially the chairman of the union carbide company how he escaped uh, the law of the government of india and uh, who could not be punished for his particular as the not taking the safety measures especially in the such a hazardous plant of course uh, the modern plants are very much required for the human being the pesticides need to be manufactured but at the same time the safety measures should also very very required so this made a clearing alarm situation to almost all the state governments and also the union government to form certain very very stringent rules uh, to measure the safety in spite of that thing we are seeing that many times the gas leakage is there or sometimes the poisons uh, uh, materials uh, get leaked into the water etc then uh, we can see that many mata diseases and many more how it has happened so the nuclear accident with the with within another two years that's 1986 that is the chernobyl episode in the soviet union in the 1986 so this is also another a very big nuclear disaster after the american pennsylvania disaster disaster so chernobyl disaster was a nuclear accident occurred in 26 april 1986 at the chernobyl nuclear power plant in the ukraine at, at that time it was uh, the soviet union was there and the power plant which was placed especially the, uh, in the in the russia middle part of the russia so this explosion was caused and many people died at that time it was the ussr then it went for so many years and the radioactive contamination was done into the atmosphere then it has attacked many people then uh, many of them lost their life and also it spread over the much of the western ussr at that time it was a united states it was also like that and also the many countries of the europe such a very big disasters so this is considered as the worst nuclear power plant accident in the history when compared to the death episodes so especially the pennsylvania episode uh, in 1779 the much people were not there in the particular island and most of them were vacated from that island but this was present in the place where a lot of human beings were living and uh, uh, it caused several death 
course, uh, it is estimated that during the 1986 to 2000, during these four years, it went on. That's where it went on. And especially 3,50,400 people were evacuated from that particular area. And uh, exactly the death tolls are not reported properly from the government. Then the use of the poison to kill the enemies is also a ancient thing as the human race. And then some people in India, Africa and Asia, so the tribal people, you may be knowing that they are living in the jungles and remote areas, have a very good knowledge about the poisonous plants and also the animals. Especially the tribal people in the Alaska and the Red Indians, they were using the arrow poisons and the poisons which are derived from the plant or also from the, the poisons from the animal origin. They were knowing it, this particular episode and they used to hunt the animal using the arrow poison. So the, these people used venoms and toxins and plant extracts for stupefying the fish or catching the fish. Today, nowadays also some of the nomadic persons, tribal people, they use many plant leaves. They thrust it and put it to the pond and uh, the fish, fish will die and they will float on the water and these people are going to wash them properly and eat. Whereas the arrowhead poison and hunting the arrowhead poison using the some of the physostigmine, neostigmine, etc. Then uh, uh, they used to competitively block the neuromuscular actions and cause paralysis. And the people used to hunt the animals, especially the bees, etc., for a good purpose. And sometimes these warfare agents, like uh, the arrow poisons, they were used uh, to kill the foes, means the enemies also, or uh, they were used in the battlefield to kill the opponent people. So this is having a very, very old history, especially the so many wars in India and the other countries also, it, they were be using the biological warfare agents. Then the Everest papyrus. So Everest papyrus or papyrus Everest. So it is a, the this is a medical papyrus means it's a, especially the concise written document about the herbals, especially during the 1500 BC. So Everest Papyrus is a herbal knowledge documented properly and they were telling that certain herbs about 700 substances and the medical recipes that included the this incantations and the concussions of certain plants, just like the tea concussions, etc. They used this thing, especially in about 1550 BC was. So the oldest and most uh, important medical papyri of the ancient Egypt, especially the Everest papyrus, and it was purchased at Luxor in winter of 1973 by the King George Everest. So that's the why the, it is called as the Everest papyrus, a written document about the poisonous plants. And the George Morin Everest was the German Egyptologist and a novelist, and he written all these documentations in a proper method, especially the knowledge of the herbal medicaments, and also some poisoning uh, notations were there. And here can you go through this uh, particular video, youtube.p, then dc, etc. Uh, if your time is there, a very interesting story how this person, Everest, George Everest, has uh, written the document. Then the Everest Papyrus in the 5000, 1500 BC is an ancient document reflecting the Egyptians had a very vast knowledge of the many of the poisonings. So about 1100 before the Christ. So if the Christ has born on zero year and before that uh, 1500, now it is 2021 plus 1500, 3500, before 3500 years this was written. Right? 
Egyptians, they had the knowledge of the hemlock, especially the state of poison. Hemlock was from the tree and it used to be collected from only used for, for the king, especially to kill the enemies and also to for the suicidal purpose. Then aconite is one of the uh, Chinese arrow poison. Especially recently there was a uh, TV series or the web series from uh, the, there is a Hindi series, that's uh, too fun, like that, maybe. So, so Saif Ali Khan has acted in this, then he has used this aconite, a Chinese arrow poison to kill his father, who was a prime minister and acquired his chair. And the opium it has used as a poison and also the antidote. Both things, the opium was used as a poison and also the antidote. Then the Greeks, Romans, and Italians used the, uh, the poisons for the execution and murder of their opponents, and many persons were killed. They used to kill the enemies by mixing the opium, aconite, or the hemlock in the food or the drinks offered to them. So, the, I think you can remember the Tandav, a recent web series in your Corona, this COVID 19, you might have seen. The Saif Ali Khan has uh, uh, killed this, his father using the aconite. So he was caught by another person who uh, did know this thing and a lot of political events. And other things. So you can watch this uh, movie that's uh, the first or second episode. This is coming. Then the Socrates was executed with an extra top. The hemlock means the conium maculatum extra. So this is also the Hemlock of state of poisons of the Greek, and it was recognized as the state of poison of the Greek because Socrates uh, was a very, very famous person and he told some modern things to the Greek people, especially uh, he's famous for his new field and new philosophies. But the traditional and orthodox Greeks did not accept it, so they put him to the death sentence, then he was killed by administration of the hemlock. So the hemlock was derived from the conium maculatum and it was administered to him through oral route and he died, uh, Socrates. So this knowledge of poison has uh, the expeditiously used for the suicides. So as on date also many persons do commit suicides using the pesticides, insecticides uh, or many things. Then. This knowledge of causing the suicide, especially is also very, very ancient and uh, still date, it is going on. Then here you can see a person, especially the Demosthenes in the 385 to 322 BC, he committed suicide by consuming the poison hidden, especially the pen. So this person was a Greek statesman, means he's a Greek politician and orator of ancient Athens, I mean, they were the gods and other things, uh, he used to tell the people. So here you can see that the Greek sculptures and this person uh, consumed the hemlock, this, uh, especially which is hidden in this pen. Then the varieties of the videos are also here, then you can look especially you can go through this and uh, watch it whenever you have the time. Just uh, uh, give this a term, that's there. Especially, you can give Demosthenes and varieties of the uh, web pages are also there. How he has uh, uh, committed suicide, etc. Then, the King Mathematics 6 is a contest. It's a very interesting story because uh, he is a, such a passionate king that he used his prisoners and criminals for acute toxicity experimentation. Just we are using the rats now, but that uh, king was such a cruel person. He used to administer the prisons with the varieties of the toxic substances. And he made as the human beings as uh, the experimental animal. That's why. So what happened is in such attempt, he discovered antidotes for several uh, venomous reptiles and poisonous substances. So he used to enjoy the death of the prisoners by administration of the poison. Such a 
crooked person but a scientist was also hidden in him and uh, he discovered the antidotes by administering xyz substance and administering the poison and he used to see the recovery but he was so uh, this uh, psychologically he was having certain uh, uh, maniac episodes like he was so scared about the poisons that he used to regularly ingest an antidotal mixture of the 36 ingredients to save him uh, of any assassinations by his enemies. So at that time, the uh, during the King Mathridatus sales at that time, what us? So administrations of the poison was one of the deleterious activity to kill the opponents. So this person was suspecting each and every person and uh, many times this uh, schizophrenic persons, you may see that they will suspect each and every person that they may put the poisons, the food or water or whatever it may be. And this person was also like that. And uh, now he would have been treated, but at that time, uh, the, the disease, etc., schizophrenia, etc., were not recognized properly. Whereas he himself used to drink certain antidotal mixtures of almost all the probable poisons. Then once he was caught in the war by his enemies and wanted to commit suicide by himself, but he could not die because the, uh, he used to consume the antidotal thing. Of course, the enzymes might have induced or the inhibited enzymes might have saved. And uh, there is a very good YouTube video, it's also available, and you can see this particular thing. And uh, I hope, uh, interestingly, he, he was the first person who introduced the experimental toxicology. So nowadays, we are going to induce the toxicity episodes by administering certain toxic, suspected toxic material, and administer the, them to save the animal. So likely he conducted certain experiments on his own prisoners and killed several of them. And the poisoning attained epidemic proportions in Rome during the 4th century BC. So here, uh, especially if you go to Rome, then uh, there are a lot of the writings, especially how it is developed. During his, uh, especially this uh, Rome emperor Theophrastus, especially, he included the numerous poisonous plants in their actions. So that is the first book, the Historica Plantarum. Uh, uh, the especially in the fourth century BC in the Rome, many women made use of the poisons to kill the people, particularly their husbands, to get the property and wealth. So. This, uh, this situation is still continuing. I think uh, you may be surprised to hear a story about the Karnataka Power Corporation people in the Joe Falls. So when I was a veterinarian there, and uh, there was a, this uh, compensatory ground job was offering to the wives or the survivors, especially in the Karnataka Power Corporation. So many of the persons uh, at that time used to get very good uh, salary, including the Last D class D employees also about 20 or 30,000 salary was there. So they used to come with the very much drunken to the house and to beat their wives and the children. So that was the attitude. And what happens is the Karnataka Power Corporation, it observed there is a drastic increase in the claims, especially for the compensatory jobs and the husbands used to die with the suspiciously then it formed a committee over that then they found that especially these uh, drunken people were admitted with the uh, certain poisons especially the some of the pesticides was mixed while they are drinking and they didn't get the smell of that thing also then used to die uh, then later they used to go to the Karnataka power corporation and put an application that uh, yes the job need to be given and the compensation to be given so that was after that they stopped, uh, stopped this particular compensatory ground jobs and uh, they totally removed it, especially in the Karnataka Power Corporations. Uh, uh, it did not know what is the present status. Whereas the Theophrastus in uh, 372 286 before Christ included 
the numerous poisonous plants and their actions in the in this famous uh, book the historica plantar especially the plant poisons and their actions so the theophrastus in an ancient person included the this the historica plantar so if you still late also if you go to the monument of the theophrastus so this is written there so the greek physician discroides in the 50 ad means 50 years after death of the priest classified poisons for the first time into the plants minerals and animal poisons of course nowadays it is very well classified as on date we do not know what about the future so the arsenic containing uh, uh, perfumes arsenic containing perfumes were uh, prepared by a lady known as the tofana especially the greek people and such cosmetics termed as the aquatofana and were used to kill the host so this lady was a very attractive lady and uh, many kings uh, they used this lady to have a very good friendship with the enemies and offer the aquatofana so aquatofana was a mixture of uh, the arsenic and uh, other highly poisonous materials and this lady was a such a psycho person he used, she used to kill the enemies by by offering this type of the poison and later even after uh, it was an official job at that time some ladies were used as a uh, uh, this uh, human weapons against the enemies and uh, these ladies used to have the friendship with the enemies and uh, well they used to give this aquatofana mixed in the wine or any other alcoholic substances so later this lady aquat of this tofana she developed the psychological uh, uh, what you call as the psychological inhibition to kill the children also so the she used to attract many of the ladies and offer them a pot of fana and she used to kill and enjoy the death of these persons so the arsenic containing cosmetics have been reported to responsible for the deaths when in the 20th century later uh, especially in the greek later in the 20th century they were used as the official poisons uh, the hemlock and other thing they used to take much more time to kill whereas the arsenic was a fast acting poison so it used to be preserved in a very safe place by the king of that country and uh, it was allowed to be touched by the official officially appointed appointed persons so the during middle ages the toxic concussions means uh, uh, the mixture of certain substances the onset of their actions then the specificity site of action and the clinical signs and the symptoms of the poisoning were recorded during the middle ages then in case of france the a lady with named catherine de merci she was uh, a particulars along with her uh, friend that is the martinis de brinivelas used these the most effective poisons on sick and poor people in the name of treating them and kill several people and the catherine was given the name of law wisen means the pain of the death so so this catherine the uh, medsai has a she has got a very beautiful she has a very attractive beauty parlor and the people used to go there uh, with that particular beauty parlor and she used to mix the arsenic and other highly toxic material especially on the cosmetics and try to kill all those things later she was uh, convicted for many poisonings in about 2000 infants were killed by this lady especially the catherine de medici so she killed about the 2000 lady and she was also sentenced to death using the poisons which was used by her only so this type of the ancient things and mosa ben miam mosa ben miamon and rambam in the 1135 to 1024 ad wrote a famous book known as the 
reduce on poisons and their antidotes. So, the describing the treatment of poisons from insects, snakes, and mad dogs. At that time, it was thought this the mad dogs secrete a poison and the death will occur. So, just like the snake bite, they were thinking like that because the knowledge was uh, very less at that in the during the 1135 to 1204 years, about the 800 to 900 years back. So, this was the first real compendium of the poison, the book, the treatise on the poisons and their antidotes. So, the four snake bites, he taught the use of the tourniquets and uh, importance of sucking for the venom. Till day in uh, the village or folklore use, this is being practiced. The people are putting a bandage or the tourniquets about the bitter wind of the, from the poisonous snakes and save the presence. And sometimes the cloaca of the, this uh, poultry are also used to suck the venom. And of course, you may be saying that in the films, the whenever the heroine is bitten and her leg is bitten by a snake, the hero comes running and he sucks the poison and he gets uh, uh, the sick and later the heroine loves him a lot. So this type of the varieties of the scenes are shown to people. Then Meanders, he can be considered as one of the very first pioneers in the toxicology. In the, so it's uh, in the 1135 AD only, he found that the first real compendium of the poisons. Then, especially alchemists. So alchemist means who are in search of the goals. So in search of the universal antidote. So they used to find this universal antidote because uh, whenever they used to mine certain science in, in, in search of the gold, they used to find uh, some of the toxic materials and they tried to prepare a universal antidote. They are successful in getting 60% ethanol beverage while drizzling the fermenting products. So alchemists, so now they arise over, of course, nobody is so much fond of the gold. Still it is fond of gold. So of course, the lady students are very much attracted towards the gold is concerned. And the alchemists are the one who are in search of the gold. They travel toward the entire world and they found the universal antidote and successful in getting the 60% alcohol was the fermenting products and they used to drink it while they are in search of the goals. Then the very famous era comes whenever there is a arrival of the Paracelsus in 1493 to 15. 41 AD means the age of enlightenment. It was started in the realization put forth by the Swiss physician Paracelsus. So he told that every substance is a poison and it is the dose which distinguishes a poison from a remedy. That's why this becomes the very famous statement which holds good till today. He told that all the substances in this earth are the poisons and the dose is the one which differentiates the poison from a remedy. So he gave the concept of dose dependent toxic effects of the substances. So which remain the integral part of the toxicants, the pharmacology and also therapeutics. So this Paracelsus, the 14th century, he also emphasized the importance of the necessary of the experimentation in evaluating the response of the chemicals, then therapeutics, then also the toxic properties and also the degree of specificity. All these details, what we learned in the modern pharmacology and toxicology was dealt about uh, 700 years back by the Paracelsus. So he's a Swiss physician, he was a Swiss physician and told once again to repeat, every substance is a poison and it is the dose which distinguishes a poison from it remedy. Till day also the same sentence hold good. Then based on the, all these uh, parameters he introduced the use of mercury as the drug of choice for the syphilis in the 14th uh, uh, century. The syphilis was a 
venereal disease at that time, which was uh, affected to many persons and they used to die. Then he started treating the disease with a small quantity of the mercury as a drug of choice. Then the patients used to recover, but many times they used to die also if the dose was much more. That's why I told that dose is the one which is differentiates a poison from remedy because he treated many persons with syphilis with mercury, small and larger dose of the mercury. A small dose used to cure the, the syphilis, whereas the more dose of the same used to kill the people. That's why he got the sentence, every substance is a poisoning and it is the dose which distinguishes the poison from a remedy. That was the famous sentence which is quoted by the Paracelsus. Then the metals are probably the oldest toxins known to the mankind. Metals, maybe the heavy metal and light metal. So lead was used even before 2000 BC also. So this is uh, the Hippocrates considered to be in 3700 BC referred as, uh, especially he referred to abdominal colic in persons extracting the metals arsenic and mercury were the culprits. So this Theophrastus in uh, uh, 370 BC to 236 BC also noticed that arsenic and mercury are also poisonous. So the Hippocrates, there was both of this Theophrastus and Hippocrates. The Hippocrates, they found the heavy metals are poisonous to the human kind. And the major documentation and work of the occupational hazards, occupational hazard means which is related to their different occupations, especially the, at that time, the mining was one of the main episode or the job of the people, especially com uh, uh, commercialized. And especially the people working in the mines was the, uh, they, they used to feel a lot of sickness due to the toxicity of the gases and also the dust material. So he called the minor sickness and other diseases of the miners, he wrote the book called as the minor sickness and other diseases of the miners. So the Paracelsus in 1567 only he has written, especially in the 1100, the discourse in the disease of the workers was published by Ramazzini. So Ramazzini is also a physician and he studied the mining workers, not only mining workers, the chimney workers who used to clean chimney and the scrotal cancer was a very common in that because the carbon uh, atom, carbon was uh, a culprit for the scrotal cancers. They used to stand on that chimney and uh, uh, climb the chimney, then they, they used to get the scrotal cancers and the incidence of scrotal cancers in chimney sweepers due to the exposure of the polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So this was recognized by the Percival Pot, P-O-T-T, Pot. So he diagnosed as the chimney spot, this uh, scrotal cancer was attributed to the poisonous materials. Then, much more interesting stories are here in uh, 1700 on the occupational disease. The discourse on the disease of the workers was uh, the, in, the, in, in the other la the language, D. Morbis, this uh, the R.T. Ficum Diatriva was published by the Bernadio Ramazzini, an Italian physician. Of course, this is the Italian name, D. Morbis, R.T. Ficum Diatriva. So this is the Ramazzini of uh, the Italian, Italy. Then Ramazzini along with this uh, Francisco Tortai, was an early proponent of the use of synchrona bark in the treatment of the malaria also. So they contributed very uh, varieties of the substances. Synchrona tree, nowadays it is one of the very good source of varieties of the drugs, including the anti-cancerous drugs, synchrona bark. So the incidence of this total cancer in chimney sweepers was exposure to the polyaromatic hydrocarbons was recognized in 1775 by the Percival Pot later. This person, Percival Pot, and also the Italian person. Then the word experimental toxicology was promoted by the Magandai. 
this person is a mega knight especially during 1973 to 1885 then the benaventura orifila and the barna in the 1813 to 1728 so this is the era the of the golden era of the toxicology by m j b orifila so mantis j b orifila he was uh, the toxicologist who used to take the autopsy material as an evidence in the medical legal case nowadays also today also even after uh, so many years the same thing is being taken autopsy material or the biopsies uh, or the autopsy material like the different organs and the uh, body fluids are taken as an evidence to test for the medical legal offenses and laid the foundation of the forensic toxicology and described the correlation between the persistence of chemicals in the body and then the biological effect of the physiological effect so m j b orifila he is considered as the father of the father of modern toxicology m j b orifila he is considered as the father of modern toxicology so Father of modern uh, toxicology, he developed certain analytical methods to detect the poison, uh, special presence of toxicants in the body, especially the heavy metals. So he also devised the certain antidotal therapies of uh, the heavy metals. Then Francis Francois Magande discovered the mechanism of action of the emitting, then strychnine, and also the arrow poison. Then third Bernard. discovered the mechanism of action of the curares alkaloid curair alkaloids and also the carbon monoxide how they are going to kill the human beings then the first gin and mustard gas so they were the war gases in the world war 1 and they killed enormous number of the people especially from the allied countries whereas the organic phosphorus compounds or uh, they are also called as the cholinesterase inhibitors were discovered in the world war 2 by the german scientist uh, that is the uh, there is the say what you call as the world war 2 so the hitler adolf hitler forced the scientists many scientists to find a very good answer to the allied people the americans and other thing so then varieties of the scientists so they started investigating the very dangerous chemicals like the organophosphorus compounds so they were initially used as the warfare agents then because of their beneficial effects on the insects they were used as the insecticides so thereafter vast expansion of all the aspects of the science toxicology they included in the publication in the form of the textbooks and journals then lot of legislations and formation of the toxicological society etc have taken place so after this world war 2 lot of knowledge about the poison was uh, done especially the claud warner and was the one who is a major uh, person especially finding the curares and the carbon monoxide so the varieties of this uh, stringent legislations were the done especially in the Uh, developed countries especially on the misuse of the poison and uh, to stop such thing the analytical toxicology means analysis of the poisons in the body materials then the environmental protection agency epa is one of the strong governing body in the us state united states of america and upon realization that they are causing lot of disorders and risk in not in essentials of adequate protection is very much required to the man animals and the ecosystem so survival of the human kind depends on the survival of the other species like plants and animals we should live together 
and availability of the clean air, water, soil, and energy. Then the survival of the human, animals, and ecosystems is the ultimate goal of the study of the toxicology means. So this is like a what you call as a scavenger person always protect the well-being of the human, animals, and the ecosystem as in a friendly manner. So there, therefore, the applications of the discipline of the toxicology in the safety evaluation of the risk assessment. Nowadays, it is one of the utmost importance in today's modern life because the people know that the modern things are very much required. At the same time, there should be a very stringent. Yes. So we'll uh, 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 finish here, and tomorrow onwards we will uh, see what is the scope of toxicology. Just wait for two hours.